Sahara. Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. While we are all watching the World Cup in Brazil, it's important to remember that over 200 schoolgirls from Chibok are still in captivity. It's now over 70 days since the girls were kidnapped. So look, to look at how things are and where things are, we have the honor of having our studio here in New York City, the senator representing Brono Central at the Nigerian Senate, Senator Ahmed Zena. Senator Zena, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you. So um, it's been 70 days, and yeah. people across the world, they have bought into this campaign, they want to see that the girls are freed. Yeah. What is the situation now in Borono? Um, I left uh, Nigeria almost three weeks now, uh, but I have been getting in touch with my people and I'm inquiring about what is happening. And also, I am also talking to different people who uh, happen to know the movements of Boko Haram and uh, what is going on uh, about the girls and all what have you. But up till today, I don't think a breakthrough is made by the government in getting the girls out. Uh, there is a rumor, uh, not a rumor per se, but a statement from a friend in Cameroon who lives at the border area telling me that the Boko Haram and the government are in conversation. They are negotiating. And that was before I left Nigeria. But up till today, nothing came out of it. I asked him what is happening. He said uh, the government is ready to release the detainees which they requested, but they don't want to release or give them money because they are still fighting. And which is also, I buy that idea that if they are going to get more money, they may buy weapons. Uh, but my conscience is telling me that it is better to get those girls out and then go after the Boko Haram. To take them out is most important. Let them feel, or let the government feel, if their own daughters are in these particular girls, are they going to behave the same way? So as far as I'm concerned, Although there are some moves to get them out, but because of the level of, uh, uh, of the insecurity in that area, particularly the Boko Haram's uh, you know, capacity, and they don't, the government don't want to improve the capacity of the Boko Haram, and it's, 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 it's reasonable. But it is very important for them to get those girls out. Mm. Now, now, a lot of people are worried. After 70 days, how are they feeding the girls? How are the girls, how is the health of the girls? How, do we know anything about that? Uh, actually, the information I am getting, some of them are very disturbing. Uh, uh, although I don't want to mention, but uh, they are just uh, raping uh, the girls you know, in camera and even showing them on video, video uh, releasing it to the public. You know, somebody told me that they, 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 they were shown uh, being raped, and in turn, it is the girl who, who was raped that came out kneeling down and begging the man to be patient. Do you know the reason why? Mm -hmm. They said when they raped them, they shoot them. So therefore, the girl, after being raped, she crawled down to the man, kneeling down and begging him to please be patient. So disturbing. Wow. And I, 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 
although I didn't see the video, but the, the person narrated to me, he said he had the video. And he was narrating to me. And look, look, look at the situation. And then the other scenario is that the Boko Haram are now out of fund. They are not getting enough food. So they are going from one village to another, taking the little the villagers had. And, you know, going away. And in fact, most of the villages are now uh, almost moved out of their, 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 their villages and moved to cities or gone into the neighboring countries. Mm. So more or less, they don't have any chance of getting food. So I don't know what they are going to do if food is not available. Are they going to uh, sacrifice uh, to give it to the girls? Mm. And then the other information I have, because, you know, the, 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 the kidnap is a continuous process, which they have been doing before mm -hmm. the 200 and after the 200. Yes. So in their possession, there are up to, up, to, up to 500 or over 500 women who are being taken from, from the streets, uh, I mean, on, on the main roads when they are traveling, mm. or to go to the villages and collect them. Uh, you know, all kinds of uh, mm. uh, abductions. Mm. Now, um, people are also asking about the international community that offered to help um, and sending support staff and America sent in through some, some soldiers to chat. Why is it that um, we've not seen any kind of action, even if the Nigerian side are not effective? Why are the international uh, group not being effective in terms of taking action? You know, Nigeria being an independent country, the international community are very careful in, 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 in their conducts. Uh, but they will really have, or they are in a burden of guilt if they do not do anything about this situation. Mm. Because the situation is more than disturbing. Maybe the government did not give them permission to go. Particularly America, they are in Chad. I don't know, after my departure, they must, have, they must have moved into Nigeria or they are doing something, I don't know. But they did not go direct to Nigeria. Mm, mm. They are in Chad. Mm. So, uh, I, 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 I don't know... Uh, what is going on with the government. Mm. Since I'm not around, mm. I don't have much inf information on the relations between the foreign countries and Nigerian government. Mm. Now, can you tell our viewers what brought you to America? You, you were saying before they came on air that you went to the United Nations. Yes, I went to United Nations simply because there are so many people in my constituency from Banki area, from uh, Kala Belge area, Gambarungala, I'm sure you remember Gambarungala, where about 500 people were killed by Boko Haram. And these people don't even, even those who are close to the border, they go into Cameroon, spend the night, come back the following day to spend their day. And so there are a lot of refugees across the border. And they were not allowed deep into Cameroon they are just by the side of the, of, the, of, of, of the river. Some of them are in Fotokol, some of them are in Damanga, uh, some of them are in Banki, I mean, uh, for, uh, Kualofata, uh, and some of them are in Amchide. Nobody is taking care of them. They are just there, no food, no uh, any facility for uh, human existence. So therefore, I became disturbed. I said, let me come and at least get audience with the United Nations so that they can at least form a camp around that area. People are really, really afraid to live in Nigeria. 
the, are the Nigerian government aware of this, that people are moving to Cameroon? They are aware, because I, 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 when I gave an interview to BBC at that time, when the Kala Belge people and Gambarungala people were moving to Cameroon, they told me they want to move to Cameroon and they, have, they are now parking. I told them, yes, go on, move, because you are not being protected. Since you inform the government to come and protect you and they don't come, you inform them of, uh, of, of uh, an, uh, an impending attack, nobody comes to rescue you. So what is left for you is to move into Cameroons uh, where maybe you may be safe. So that interview I granted over three years, weeks now. So therefore, I don't think the government is not aware. Mm. Uh, because the, the relief agency uh, uh, organization, of, uh, that is, the, we call it NEMA, mm. are aware. They wanted to send goods to that place, but even the transporters are not ready to transport food to that area. Mm. So therefore, what is left for us is to tell United Nations to come through Cameroon to give food to those people. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this question uh, is about the presidential committee that was set up to look into the kidnapping. They yeah. turned in their reports, um, yeah. uh, I think last week. Yeah. And um, yet, there are some people out there who believe that this kidnapping of these girls is, is not, it didn't happen. What do you say to such people? I, I, I think they are not fair, at the same time they are not humans. If they say this did not happen, then they are not human beings. If you are psychopathic to government, you shouldn't go to that extent. Where the life of people are involved, particularly vulnerable people like schoolgirls, you know, even after the abduction, there were a lot of killings that had taken place. But the attention of the world is on those girls. Why? Because they are women and they are very young at, at their tender age. And if somebody is not sympathetic to that and coming to deny that this has not taken place, I think is not being fair to human community. Mm -hmm. Now, um, last two weeks, there was an attempted bombing in a church in Oware, in Imo State, and it was blamed on Boko Haram. And a few days after, the, a convoy of vehicles traveling to the east with yeah. Northerners were stopped by the military in, in a bar area. Yeah. And they were all um, called suspected Boko Haram um, fighters. Uh, what, how do you react to that? How do you see uh, the government approach to, um, especially the military, to Boko Haram insurgents, both in the north and, and um, other activities across the country? What is most important for the government to do is to go and chase Boko Haram, who are harassing people in the bushes of Borno State. Not going to intimidate people who have gone for their daily needs. Particularly in my state, where the Boko Haram prevalence has been, you know, going on for the past three years, most of the young men now travel southwards in order to be safe both from the Boko Haram and from the intimidation of the military. Then, if they are not going to survive in, that, in those areas or in other parts of Nigeria, then where else are they going to go? So this is a conspiracy theory. Nothing like that. Nobody, nobody will ever attempt to go and do Boko Haram activities in the East. It is never possible.
So if you don't want people to live in your in, in, in another area of Nigeria or I, I don't know what where, where we are heading to. Yeah, it because, is really very dangerous. Yeah, that's the next question I have because that incident was didn't happen. But if it had happened, it would be Boko Haram attacked over it. How will the reaction, what reaction do you expect that will have followed? Or let's say an attack happens in Lagos. What will be the fate of the country? How, what kind of, have you thought about that kind of imagine what will happen? I think from the beginning I have been thinking that what is happening in Borno State is a conspiracy theory. Although the Boko Haram is inexistent, but generally some people have taken over the Boko Haram itself mm -hmm. and then pretending that the Boko Haram is inexistent. And then they now recruited vulnerable children or conscripted into the, 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 the perceived Boko Haram. And these boys don't know anything. 15 years old, 16 years old, 20 years maximum. And they are being unleashed on the community, trained and given guns. And a young man of 20 years and below, having a gun in his hand, nobody is coming after him, you know, he, he will go and do any, any, any kind of crime. And that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. So some people must have cashed in after the, 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 the Boko Haram thing is, uh, has, has been started. Because last year, around June, I think uh, around June, July, the Boko Haram were chased out of all the major cities. All the major cities. They are in the bush. And then there is no any such bush that can cover, you know, uh, Boko Haram groups from the military even though they are saying the military are not, uh, uh, they, 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 they don't have incentives, they don't have enough guns, and even with that, the Boko Haram don't have enough training to withstand, like, to, to withstand the military attack. Mm. It's never possible. Mm. I don't believe it. Mm. Now, now let's they are go just to, allowed to move on. Let's go to the conspiracy theories because there are so many, and I want to give you the chance to dispel. You know that area more than anybody else. You yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. So let's go to the first theory that uh, the Boko Haram insurgents is a northern plan to make Nigeria ungovernable for President Jonathan. Do you buy that theory? I think uh, this I, I, I don't buy because I am from Borno and I am Kanuri. And then the Boko Haram, I think 60, 70 percent of them are Kanuris. These are disgruntled young men who are being brainwashed by a particular young man of 50 years or even less than 50 years. And then they took arms against the government. They were very few. I don't know how the whole thing uh, got developed and then some people might have cashed in and then told the president that the northerners are now doing this in order to sabotage your government and he bought that idea and therefore he don't care what is going on in Borno State and these people have exploited maybe the, the innocence of the president. Uh, I, I don't know how, and they have succeeded. They have succeeded because they have succeeded in killing innocent individuals. Mm. And they have succeeded in getting a lot of money out of the government. Because we budgeted about 100 billion naira to fight Boko Haram. But to my dismay, I think even a thousand guns were not bought from that money. Where has that money gone to? Mm. So it is a double-edged sword. Uh, uh, on one part, they are ripping the country. 
On the other part, they are killing individuals, mm. either on religious basis or on sectional basis, or you are fighting uh, the government or whatever, you know? So uh, they, they, they have achieved. Now, let's look at another theory that it was a plan by the government security agencies to make sure that the 2015 elections were not held in the Northeast so that President Jonathan will win re-election. Do you, do you believe that? I think it is more than that. It is more than that. Mm -hmm. Because if it is a political, uh, like, like the, the, the succession of, of, of or, 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 or they are fighting for the success of Jonathan, is a different thing. Mm -hmm. But now it is taking another dimension. Mm -hmm. Look at this already issue. If you look at it, we are inching towards definite crisis. Yeah. Just forget about what is happening in Borno. If people who have traveled to other parts of the country are now chased and uh, framed as Boko Haram, then it is getting more dangerous than anybody can imagine. This is the third one. Um, it, it says people are saying that it is an FBI CIA plan to bring about America's prediction that Nigeria will break up in 2015. What do you think about that? I haven't looked at that angle. I haven't looked at that angle. I thought it is a local issue, you know, and then it has become a national issue. But to think that other countries are involved in this conspiracy, I think I didn't look at that. And I will now seriously start looking at that angle now. Now, um, so, so far, the president um, has been um, talking about doing things to, to deal with this situation. But are you satisfied with the way he's been handling this? I am not satisfied because still Boko Haram will go to villages and uh, kill people uh, uh, and, and, then, and, then, and then go without being chased. For the first time, I was happy on Saturday when the villagers went and attacked Chibok village. There, there are some villages around Chibok area and they killed about 28 or 30 people. And then the villagers gathered and uh, started fighting the Boko Haram. Eventually, the military came and joined them. And for the first time, a bomb was used by the Nigerian uh, fighter jet to bomb the Boko Haram. I hope they can continue. If these things are taking place on a daily basis or what, whenever there is an attack, I don't think Boko Haram will ever exist. Or they may even survive for even two months. Mm -hmm. They are unleashing the a terror on the people just because they are being neglected by the Nigerian security. Mm -hmm. So now that what had happened on Saturday, if the military persists on that, I think I will be the happiest person in this world. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask, because uh, the National Security Advisor, Dasuki, and the Minister of Defense, they are from the North. Have you met with them, and have they been able to explain to you, even if it's uh, in private, what is actually going on? Why is it that the military uh, and the security agencies are not able to control what is going on. Because we hear all the time that the Jonathan um, has this plan or Jonathan is planning this, but are they part of the plan of the government or what is, what is their own take on this? I don't know of the Minister of Defense. I never met him. I never met the Minister of Defense. Uh, but Dasuki, I used to go there and inform him of the movements of Boko Haram, what is going on. If there are some killings, I go and inform him. Why is it that this is happening? You better caution your military, you know? 
on, on, on these activities and then why are they negligent on, on the killings that is going on? I, I, I used to interact with him. But he's saying that we will do something. We will do something. And beyond that, he had never told me anything. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So, I, 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 I don't know uh, whether their presence in the government is very important or not. I, I cannot say. Mm -hmm. Now, the international community, the UN you met, you met here, and uh, are, they are they responding positively? What are they going to no, do? I will, see them, I will see them today. Today? Oh, you're going to see them today? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and um, you want them to assist the people that assist moved the people out, that out, have moved out of the country. Out of the country. Yeah, because even those people who are living within Borno need a lot of assistance, but the international community don't want to go there because they are not satisfied with the conduct of the military. Uh, or the security agencies, so they don't think they are protect they are going to be protected. So for this reason, I will not even ask them to go now. But those who are outside the country, who are in Cameroons, let them go and assist those people. Mm -hmm. It's very important mm -hmm. because there will be a is we we are already in a humanitarian crisis. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a few minutes left. Uh, let me. Um, just ask you, looking at the campaign, Bring Back Our Girls campaign, yeah. uh, what do you, there are there other things you want ordinary Nigerians to do to help to keep the issue in focus, especially demanding that government should take action? Is there anything else you want Nigerians to do? Yeah, they, they I mean, the Nigerian people must rise up to tell the government that it is important to restore the image of the country. Because people are losing confidence in the government and governance of Nigeria now. So if President Jonathan is ready to save his image and then to see that people will live peacefully within Nigeria as one, then he has to do something about it. It is very, very important. As of now, people have lost confidence and they don't have confidence in, in, the, in, 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 in his governance. Mm -hmm. So he has to look at that. If he is being guided or misguided by the people who are around him, let him wake up. That is my advice to him. Mm -hmm. Because... He has to save his image. Mm. It is not this presidency that he should look at, but let him look at the future of Nigeria mm. and future of Nigerians. Mm. Thank you so much, Senator Zena. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming Thank to you. our Thank studio. You, my brother. That was Senator Zena discussing the issue in the Northeast, especially Borno State and Boko Haram. Uh, stay tuned for more uh, programs.